I feel like it's definitely heading into autumn properly now because it's so dark during the day. Um, I put a lamp on to try and help light the desk up um, and I have my little glowy friend um, but hopefully it's not too dark. I feel really funny about it because I'm so used to working with natural light and now that it's disappearing for the winter I'm like oh the video looks terrible. <laughs> um, so hopefully it's not too bad and I'm just overthinking it. Um, these are the books that I bought yesterday when I went out. I went out with a list of cool spooky books to buy um, and my local Waterstones is not particularly good. The staff there are so so nice, like the staff are amazing, way better than any other Waterstones I've shopped at. But the offering of books is always really weird and the horror section is tiny, it's only one shelf so it's always just a bit like... Um, they also have supply chain issues at the moment I think, so like they've just filled up a lot of the shelves with like fake books and it's so funny. Um, so in the end I got this one, um, The Haunting Season, Ghostly Tales for Long Winter Nights, which online it said they didn't have it, so I was really surprised when I saw it. Um, they actually had the paperback and the hardback, um, but my hardback trolley is full so I got the paperback. Um, I'm really excited to read this one, I hope it's good. It's a collection of short stories, um, so I'll let you know how I got on with that. And then the other one I got, which I'm now realising I think is by the same author who did the recent Persephone times Hades one, because down here it says Adrian and Isolde, and I'm like, I think it is the same author and I maybe wouldn't have bought it if I had realised that, because I know the Persephone and Hades one has really mixed reviews, so I don't know if it will be good. Um, this is why I go with a list, because I normally do a lot of research before I buy a book, which I don't know if that's good or bad, maybe I should just be buying them and then seeing how I get on, but, um, maybe it'll be good, I don't know, if you've read it don't tell me, <laughs> don't tell me if it's bad, I don't want to know, um, it's just, it reads the plot, the plot, the blurb, it reads like a, a another silly vampire romance, and I love those, so, um, we'll see. And then I think the other book I might read this month, um, which I bought like a long time ago, is this. Um, it's called The Ghost, A Cultural History by Suzanne Owens, who sounds really familiar. I feel like I've read others of her books, but I'm not sure what. I'll look it up. <laughs> um, it's so good. I've had this for years. I think I have two copies. 
because when I moved I was so sad at not having it on my shelf <laughs> um, that I bought a second copy. Um, it's just a cultural history of ghosts. I've read another book like this. I read, um, I'll insert a picture of the one I read because I can't remember what it's called, but that one was really good. Um, and this one is big and it has a lot of photos as well. So I'm hoping I'll enjoy this one just as much, but it's probably gonna take me longer to read. Um, but the pictures and stuff are really cool. Um, I just think this is a nice book to have in your collection. Like, <laughs> I just think it's a really nice one. Um, and then the last thing I bought yesterday, I didn't buy this yesterday, I've had this already. Um, and then the last thing I bought yesterday was just this paper pumpkin from Tiger. Um, and I think I'm gonna hang it up now. Um, when I was in town yesterday, it was so busy and so loud and it got dark and I just had a weird time. Um, I didn't really find much of what I was looking for. I had to go out for a few things and I feel like I didn't find any of them. Um, but it is always really exciting when the Halloween food appears in M&S. Um, I think their Halloween food offerings are completely unparalleled to other supermarkets because other supermarkets don't create their own range of Halloween stuff, but M&S do every single year and it's so good. Um, I like that Colin the Caterpillar has a new theme every year. My favourite one so far was when he was a vampire with Count Colin. What is happening here? Did he get all crunchy? Ah, it's raining. Can you hear the rain? That's why it's been so dark recently. We've had a lot of rain. Um... Ooh, okay, let me go and fix this and I'll show you when it's done. Can you not bat my pillow, please? Put your teeth away. Put your teeth away. <laughs> Thank you.
I just wanted to do a sort of end of week catch up. Um, today is Saturday, which is when patrons normally have the video. Um, <clears throat> and my voice is kind of scratchy, sorry. Um, I wanted to talk, I guess, about the week because it was, I hate to say it, but it was a weird week. Um, I really struggled at the beginning of the week because it was quite dark and rainy, so it made it quite hard to film video. Um, most of you know that I only film with my phone because it's all I have. Um, and that's why the audio is always trash and everything. Um, and when it gets quite overcast in the room, the video gets a lot of like background noise visually, um, which is just a limitation of smartphones. Um, so I was getting quite frustrated because I was filming these clips of me working and stuff, but they looked terrible. Like it really drops the quality of the, of the image and the video. So I was getting really frustrated with that at the beginning of the week. Um, and I also just didn't get a lot done because I wasn't really feeling very good. And then basically on Thursday, I kind of rallied around a bit and I spent the whole day prepping and packing shop orders because some supplies I've been waiting for finally came in so I could actually pack the orders. And I packed a third of them and I was really, really happy because the whole week I'd been putting off things like cleaning my room and hoovering and doing laundry and stuff, like normal life stuff, because I was busy doing the, the shop orders. Um, but then I got the orders packed and I felt relieved because I was like, that's the most important thing and I'm really glad I got it done. And the plan was that I would take them on Friday yesterday to the post office, the first third of the orders. Um, and then I could do the next two thirds on like... Monday and Tuesday for example and then it would all be done by midweek next week um, and I felt really good about this <laughs> I was really relieved um, because on Friday I had a nail appointment um, and I had to run some errands so I was like oh it'll be great because I can just do it all in one day like I can go early and I can take my shop orders I can get my nails done like I had an appointment for my nails and then I can run my errands with the bags I used to take the post um <laughs> And for those of you who follow me on Instagram, you'll have known that I messed it up um, and I took it quite hard. Basically what happened is I got to the post office and I put the first order through and then I was like, ah, oh, because I suddenly realised that I hadn't put the enamel pins in any of the orders. And I just stood there staring at the stupid, like, the self, like, checkout screen thing in the post office and I was like, what do I do? Um, and I wanted to talk about it because I, I talk about autism a lot, right? Like, I'm autistic and I talk about it. And, and a lot of you who follow me are also autistic or neurodivergent or... So I just wanted to be real about it because I think sometimes I get comments and people are like, oh, I don't know how you manage it all, I don't know how your books are so perfect and stuff. So I just want to be clear that I am literally only ever just about managing to keep myself intact. Like... Oh God, I don't want to cry. Um, it just hit me really hard because it wasn't the that I didn't know what to do because they did. Like I had two options, right? My options were either walk all the way back home with the bags of post and drop them off and then come back into town for my appointment and run my errands or carry the bags of post around with me while I run errands. Like these were the only options and I knew what those were. I could identify the options. The problem I had was that I didn't know which one to choose. I didn't know which one was better because both were bad. <laughs> because the first option to walk all the way back home with the post and then walk back in for my appointments is like a an energy level disaster. Anyone with compromised energy levels will understand that it's just not that simple. I don't live very far from town. It's like a 15 or 20 minute walk, but that's a lot of energy for me to use, especially to then have a nail appointment which is quite intense, like the smells and talking to people and the sensations and stuff, like nail appointments are kind of hard. So the idea of having to do that walk another two times and then go to a nail appointment straight away because I would be running out of time was just a disaster. And I had to eat beforehand because it was like coming up on midday and I don't eat breakfast. So it was this whole thing where like I had this really nice plan to just get the orders done. I was so happy with myself. <laughs> like, I was really pleased that I was on track. I was going to have like a cute lunch. I was going to get my nails done for Halloween. I was going to run cute errands and I was going to like video it all for the vlog. Oh my God, did I just call it a vlog? <laughs> um, but you know what I mean? Like I was, I was going to do all those things and it was going to be so nice because the rest of the week had been so difficult already and things didn't go well with the video and I was really excited. 
or like not excited i was just really relieved that i was gonna have a good day so then the first thing on my list and i get to the post office and i realized that all of the orders are like fucked up i was like oh so i went over like i got the guy to cancel the one order and he looked at me like i was mad because i was like twitching and i was like i didn't know what to do i was like having a little autistic moment and i obviously was no longer vibing with the surroundings um so i went over and i sat on a bench and i just sat there with my bags of post and i texted the family group chat and i was like you're never gonna believe what i've done this time and my dad was like well you have two options obviously which i had already worked out and and he was said like at least you hadn't posted them with the without the pins because then you would have had to do double the shipping to ship everyone their pins which is true but i was not ready to hear the upside <laughs> Um, and I was by myself in town and I was like on the brink of a meltdown because I had had such a weird week like just a difficult week and things piling up and I was like I can't believe I managed to fuck it up so bad like what is wrong with me so I had a little meltdown in an M&S bathroom and I then got asked to leave the M&S bathroom and the worst thing about that was that I'd had to do like an awkward crying walk through town to get to the bathroom first of all which is never great and then there was no one else there, like there was no one in the bathrooms, there was no one on that level of the m and um, and I had gone there because I know they're the quietest bathrooms in town and they're clean. So like, the idea that an employee then asked me to leave, and it wasn't even like, it was the currency desk employee, the currency exchange employee, like clearly she could hear me crying in the bathroom down the hall and she came to tell me that I was being difficult and asked me to leave, which is like, it was ridiculous because there was no one else there, like I wasn't disturbing customers, there was no one there. Um, she just didn't want to hear me crying, I guess, while she sat at her desk and served no one, so. So then I had to leave, um, and then I ate a really sad, like, Starbucks lunch <laughs> because I was panicking so hard and I couldn't remember what my safe foods were and it was a whole thing. And then I had my nail appointment, like, I was in the bathroom crying and I could see the time of my nail appointment creeping up on me and I was literally, like, when I got to my appointment, I was, like, full body shaking um from from everything like it's it was such a mess and now that a day has passed like i got my nails done i ran some errands in the end i chose to keep the bags of post with me for anyone interested like i just struggled i managed to condense it down into like a bag and a bit and then i had like half a tote bag to put groceries in so i still managed to run my errands just about but i was so stressed that the whole thing was awful obviously like i calmed down a bit during my nail appointment because they're always so nice and it's always quite calm in the salon i go to so it was fine but i was so stressed by this point that i just the whole thing was a disaster like i was trying to run my errands and I, like my vision was like blurry i had like tunnel vision <laughs> I was still full body shaking. I had like a non-stop adrenaline rush. Like it was awful. I was like sweating. <laughs> like, so for anyone interested in the fact that I'm obviously an autistic creator, like sometimes that's how it is. Like it's not cute and glamorous. It's not like a cute little freelance, disabled freelance life all of the time. It's not always just making cups of tea and drawing at my desk with a candle. Like sometimes it's literally full body shaking and crying on the floor of an MS bathroom. <laughs> like anyway my nail appointment went really well i got some really cute little halloween nails like the black tips that i love with the little cobwebs and they were really nice to me i think they could tell that i was like not doing great because they were so nice um and then i ran my errands and they were fine i guess and then i came home and i went upstairs and i just sat on my floor and cried um and the dog was really scared of me because she was like why are you making that noise <laughs> so not great um, moving on from, from that, from Meltdown Central, um, I, the video is late this week, obviously, as you can see, because I'm hopefully doing something really cool tomorrow, um, and I guess I can just tell you because you'll watch it in a minute anyway, but I think if all goes to plan, I'm going to a pumpkin patch with two of my closest friends, um, and they still live in London, so I don't get to see them very often, so I feel very emotional about going to a pumpkin patch with them. Um, and I'm really excited. I hope it turns out well. I want to film it for the video, so here's hoping that works out because I really cannot take another hit this week. Um, and that's why I wanted to get my nails done. Partly because I got them too long last time, so they grow out really fast and they were really bothering me sensory-wise. Um, but also so I can take cute pumpkin pictures. Um, so, interestingly, I do want to add that this week I was not very, like, up-to-date in my book. 
And I just think it's sus that the same week I ended up having a massive meltdown because look at the state of the week. Like, I just dropped everything on like Thursday, which to be fair is the day I was working really hard, but I wasn't updating my task list or anything or my routines. Um, and it also it just happened to be the week that I had an epic meltdown in public by myself. So I think there's something to be said about that. It's like a coincidence, I think not. Um, yeah, and um, this is the pin I got at the beginning of the week or like Wednesday or something. I wanted to show you because it's really cute. It's like a magnetic pin. So it just clips inside with like a magnet back. You probably can't see. Um, but it's really, really cute. I, I got it from Etsy and I'll put the shop. I'll link the item in the bio. But she also gave me this free like little bookmark that's made of like vellum paper um and it's really cute i've been using it on my week page because i find the monthly page and the notes page is easiest to find but i get stuck in the middle of the book trying to find the week i'm on so i popped it there um aside from that there's nothing to update really i'm reading the fourth in that trashy vampire series i will say the drama in this one is on a whole other level like, the drama has really stepped it up. Some of it is kind of hilarious. Like, I'm reading through it knowing there's going to be a happy ending. But the drama in the middle is just so, like, it's ridiculous. Um, and I am enjoying it. So, after I finish this one, I think I might read um, this one. The Adrian and his older vampire book. Um, just because I think it'll be a relatively easy transition from one trashy vampire book to another, tra potentially, a trashy vampire book. <laughs> Um, so that's where we're at. Um, today I'm gonna work on fixing the rest of the, the rest of <laughs> I'm back to the rest of them. I'm gonna work on fixing the one third of the orders that have no pins. Um, so if your order, why is there candle wax in here? If your order arrives and the envelope looks a bit battered, just know it's because I had to like aggressively open it to put the pin inside and then reseal it because I don't want to waste like thirty envelopes. Um, so if the back of it looks a bit rough, that's why. The packing envelope, not like the stuff inside. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to give you a, a real update. <laughs> um, always happy to be keeping it real on youtube.com and instagram.com. I love to be vulnerable on social media. Um, and to be honest, I think that was the worst thing about the whole situation, was that when I was in the post office and I realised what I had done, I just immediately felt so vulnerable because, like, it's one thing to exist as a disabled person and you like get used to a degree of vulnerability and, and feeling a bit insecure like you learn to live with that and then it becomes life but it's another thing when you just have a day when your disability just full-on like <laughs> slams you in the face with a shovel <laughs> like um so as soon as i realized my mistake i just felt very vulnerable um even though i wasn't like in danger like i just suddenly felt like very disabled i guess like it suddenly hit me and i was like oh what am i doing like i'm never gonna be able to do anything independently like it was just like a whole i spiraled a bit i guess um and it just hit me quite hard like in the moment um and then to have to continue running errands and stuff alone and like do that successfully and like i just felt like very small i guess all of a sudden and very vulnerable so i think that was the weirdest thing about it like when you look at it now objectively it's like was it the end of the world no babes <laughs> like it's fine i'll fix it okay now i'm a bit delayed but i'll work it out but it was just the moment of it was yeah okay hopefully everything works with the pumpkin patch tomorrow everyone cross your fingers because if there's no pumpkin patch segment you know that i'm not in a good place <laughs> um i think because the video is going to be late this week um, I might do the what's in my bag tag or the autistic talk next week just so that I don't have to upload this one and then immediately start filming the next one um, with how bad this week went it might honestly be good to take a break for a week from the attic archives um, so we'll see um, thanks for your patience on the shop orders everyone sent me really nice like dms on instagram and it made me cry more so <laughs> good job um no but thank you it's really nice that you guys are always so supportive um and a lot of you were saying that you care more about my mental health than how quick your order comes to you which is really nice um yeah i am just like a really daft human trying my best so i appreciate the support um and hopefully now there's pumpkin patch 